Welcome back, uh, our dear viewers. And uh, now it's time for our daily press review, and we are delighted to be joined here in the studio with Miss Dalia Ilgibali, media trainer. Good morning, Miss Dalia. Good morning. And uh, we start off from uh, Al Ahram uh, newspaper, and uh, we read President Fatah Sisi meets Assistant President and the Minister of Housing. President Afatah Sisi met on Monday with Assistant President for the National and Strategic Projects, Engineer Ibrahim Mahlab and Minister of Housing, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli. During the meeting, they reviewed the executive situation of the projects of social housing in the new cities and government rates. Madbouli pointed out that the first phase of the social housing, which includes 244,000 housing units, is expected to be finished during 2016. He said that 99,000 housing units was completed so far with investments that reached 13 billion pounds. The minister added that another 145,000 housing units are carried out with investments that reached 20 billion pounds. So, Ms. Dalia, how do you evaluate the government's efforts to solve the housing problems and slums problems as well? Uh, as we see, uh, they are planning for, for solving this problem. Yes. And uh, this is really one of the, the greatest problems we, we face. Yes. And uh, it is uh, uh, resulting due to many, many, many bases. Yes. And it has many circumstances that affected the, uh, the society yes. in general. For example, uh, one of the main uh, problem we have uh, socially is the unplanned areas mm -hmm. and uh, the, the social uh, effect that comes yes. through these uh, places. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, due to the lack of, uh, of uh, planned houses and planned uh, areas around the houses because we need to, to, to plan for a society, mm -hmm. not only for building uh, flats or something yes. like that. And we wish that the, 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 the new projects uh, we'll, yeah, we'll see the light yes. as soon as possible. Yes. Okay, and uh, moving uh, to al the newspaper, and we read Prime Minister Sharif Ismail had uh, the economic group meeting. Prime Minister Sharif Ismail had on Monday the economic group meeting where he discussed with the group a number of projects which the government is uh, working on. He also discussed with the group providing goods to citizens, controlling market prices, as well as attracting investments. The Prime Minister also headed another meeting of Long Live Egypt or Tahya Misr Fund. During the meeting, the Premier followed up on the projects currently implemented by the fund. So, Ms. Dalia, what's your take on the government's efforts to control prices and attract investments? Um, the main idea is planning. Yeah. And uh, to plan, you need a, a, a very uh, clear seted view yeah. and clear seted, seted mission. Mm. And sometimes uh, I feel that this is the, the view, uh, the vision and mission are not that clear, uh, either to the government or even to the citizens, yes. to the publics. Maybe there is some somehow uh, uh, good plans, but um, not not very clear settled, and not very uh, that effective yes. to be um, as a part of. Um, uh, you, need, you mean implementation? Implementation. Yes. Implementation, but clear implementation. Yes. And fast as, uh, as possible, as we yeah. said before. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, the Minister of Planning, he has uh, n not that clear, clear um, uh, role to play. Hmm. Uh, maybe he is working, but it's not, his work needs to be more, uh, more clear for, for the public. Yes. Okay, I'm moving uh, to al Yom Aseba newspaper and we read Ethiopian dam talks resume for the second day. The three-way talks between Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia on the Ethiopian dam continued on Monday in the Sudanese capital Khartoum. During the meeting, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri asserted that the Declaration of Principles, which was signed by the leaders of the three countries last March, had built a strong strategic relationship among the three countries. Foreign Minister Spokesman Councillor Ahmad Abu Zaid said that the consensus on the talks among foreign and irrigation ministers of Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia reached more than 80%. For his part, Ethiopian Foreign Minister said that his country is fully committed to the Declaration of Principles. The talks which bring together the foreign ministers and ministers of irrigation from the three countries started on 
Now our G viewers uh, will have uh, a report about the latest development uh, concerning the uh, Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and uh, we'll be back. of the six-way talks between Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia on the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam decided on Monday to continue their negotiations on Tuesday in the Sudanese capital Khartoum. Sudanese Minister Ibrahim Randur said that the resumption of the talks will continue to settle all disputed points, adding that the meeting that continued for 25 hours over two days had reached lots of understanding from all parties. The minister added that the closed meeting will tackle the rest of the disputed points and a declaration will be announced at the end of the meeting on Tuesday. The talks which bring together foreign ministers and ministers of irrigation from the three countries stated on Sunday. During the meeting, Foreign Minister Sam Shukri asserted that the Declaration of Principles, which was signed by the leaders of the three countries last March, had built a strong strategic relationship between the three sides. Ethiopian Foreign Minister Tuadros Adenholm stated that his country was fully committed to the Declaration of Principles. The talks covered the issue of consultancy firms in charge of preparing technical studies about the possible effect of the dam on water share of the Nile to the downstream countries. Welcome back. Uh, now, uh, Ms. Dalia, as we are uh, talking about the Renaissance Ethiopian Dam, do you think that uh, an agreement could be reached concerning the pending, uh, issues, uh, pending issues that need to be resolved? I wish. But um, we, we need to, to, to put into consideration that when you, when you are negotiating about something, you have to, to have the minimum goal. And this minimum goal, I, I, I felt yes. sometimes that we lost it. Hmm. So we need to be clear, even we, ha we, we are doing this agreement for, for having a, a good uh, relationship with Ethiopia and Sudan, hmm. or for, for having uh, a solution about the water, yes. or for, for not having uh, this dam uh, 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 completed, hmm. or what is the specific goal we are trying to reach. Hmm. Because I have uh, in myself, I feel that we are away from um, from from the goal that should be reached. Mm. Yes. So uh, we need to again to settle the goal clear and to to have a clear vision about what we are e each thing we are we, we are doing. It's not about having just uh, um, just meetings and yeah. just kind of negotiations and trying to 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 find an agreement about nothing we are concretely uh, believing in. Mm. Yes, okay, moving uh, to Al-Yum Al-Sabi, a newspaper, and uh, we read which ambassador meets a uh, Grand Imam of Al-Azhar. Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayyib, met on Monday with the British ambassador in Cairo at Al-Azhar headquarters to discuss cooperation between both sides. The meeting witnessed the launch of Al-Azhar United Kingdom program for scholarships in Britain. During the meeting, the Grand Imam said that Al-Azhar aims through this program to boost academic cooperation with, with the British universities in order to achieve the ambitious goal and message of Al-Azhar in establishing peaceful coexistence among all nations. For his part, the British ambassador expressed his country's happiness to constantly play an active role in helping Al-Azhar to confront extremism, intolerance, and promote peace. So how do you evaluate the role of Azhar at this critical stage in establishing peaceful coexistence among all nations and promoting peace as well? This is a great role of Azhar as you yes. uh, Just sometimes, um, uh, sometimes we need to confront uh, mm. the others and sometimes we need to confront ourselves yes. first. Mm. Uh, for, for example, for the tourism, uh, 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 tourism issues, we need to confront the other. The yeah. people, others people. Uh, for the tourists, mm. we need to confront ourselves. Yes. For the religion uh, uh, wordings and how to uh, to elaborate that Islam is the uh, is the religion of peace and that stuff, uh, we need to talk to ourselves first. Yes. Because still some some uh, people who are uh, very radicals or very extremists in our societies. So we need to to to. Uh, to, to have a deal with them first, then confront the others and the, the, the people around all over the world. Um, we need to talk about what we have uh, really in uh, to, to, uh, to be a model of peace 
um, a model of peace uh, country mm -hmm. than t trying to talk about peace to others. Yes. And uh, moving uh, to Al Wafd, and uh, we read the Interior Minister meets Chairman of the National Council for Human Rights. Minister of Interior General Magdi Abdel Ghaffar met on Monday with the Chairman of the National Council for Human Rights, Mohammed Faik, to discuss means of cooperation among both entities. The Interior Minister confirmed his ministry's commitment to uphold justice, accountability, and human rights values. He praised the important role played by the Council and its members in defending individual freedoms and consolidating human rights culture in Egypt. For his part, Fai stressed the high appreciation of the Council for the sacrifices made by the Egyptian policemen to ensure the safety and security of the society. He pointed out that the Council is keen to strengthen cooperation with the Interior Ministry. So, um, Ms. Dalia, how can the Ministry of Interior cooperate with the National Council for Human Rights to human rights culture in Egypt? Uh, first, not only in the police stations yes. and the for, uh, police uh, policemen uh, who need to be yes. um, not only aware because they are, are aware of the mm. human rights, but yes. how how to implement this in their daily yes. life work. Uh, but I see that it's more important to uh, uh, to create this awareness among the, mm. the, the students in the schools. Yes. Uh, so we need to 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 bring up students on on what they have to do and what they have to avoid mm -hmm. and uh, what are their rights and what are their duties mm -hmm. uh, to, to be uh, um, something spontaneously when they bro uh, grown up uh, to, to do when it, well, if they are uh, just publics or yes. even they are part of the police uh, police or uh, yeah, forces. We're moving uh, to Alium Asseba and uh, we read to Rizm Promotion Authority to organize a New Year celebrations in Sharm el Sheikh. Head of the Tourism Promotion Authority, Sami Mahmoud, said on Monday that the authority will organize massive New Year celebrations in the city of Sharm el Sheikh. Mahmoud added that many international singers will perform a collection of their songs in the celebrations, which will last from December 30th to January the 1st. So, um, to what extent New Year celebrations in Charm Sheikh can help in promoting tourism? Uh, it will be like um, a not permanent thing, but yes. permanently, uh, but, but uh, terminally. And uh, it's something very, very interesting for having this kind of events. Yeah. But uh, in order to create something very stable, uh, especially for this kind of um, of, uh, of celebrations uh, for the new mm. year, because it, it's annually, you have need to to, have, to to think um, and see how how other countries plan yes, yes. for having these great moments to start a new year. Uh, like uh, I remember, yeah, not only a, a like a concert in a hotel yes, because yes. it's not that uh, um, effective for publics, but they need to celebrate in streets, celebrate in in, uh, in uh, uh, having. Um, counting down like mm. uh, like other cities yes so we need to create this kind of awareness uh, uh, among the the people who are working on tour tourism yes. okay and they're uh, moving to Alium Asaba and uh, we read Iraq declares Ramadi liberated from the Daesh terrorists Iraq declared the city of Ramadi liberated from the Daesh group on Monday and raised the national flag over its government complex after clinching a landmark victory against the extremists. And now uh, we'll have a report about the situation in Iraq and uh, the liberation of Ramadi. Iraqi Prime Minister Hidr al-Abedi declared on Monday that the coming year would see his forces defeat Daesh. This took place after his military achieved its first major victory since collapsing in the face of the militants 18 months ago. Iraqi forces flew the national flag above the main government complex in Ramadi earlier in the day, declaring they had recaptured the city, a provincial capital west of Baghdad, which fell to Daesh in May. The army's apparent recapture of Ramadi capital of Ambar province in the Euphrates River Valley west of Baghdad marks a major milestone for U.S. trained forces who crumbled when Daesh militants charged into Iraq in June 2014. Meanwhile, the White House said the U.S. President Barack Obama 
vacationed in Hawaii with his family, received an update on Monday on the Iraqi forces' progress in Ramadi. Congratulating the Iraqi government, U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter said that the expulsion of Daesh by Iraqi forces is a significant step forward in the campaign to defeat this barbaric group. U.S. officials said the U.S.-led coalition backing Iraqi forces had carried out more than 630 airstrikes in the area over the past six months and provided training and equipment. That was uh, the last uh, piece of uh, news in our uh, press review for today. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, our guest, uh, Ms. Dalia Gabelli, a media trainer. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> and now the viewers will go for a short break and we'll uh, resume the breakfast show. So stay tuned. <laughs>